in color. The continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington, Patricia Morrow as Rita Harrington, James Douglas as Stephen Corn. Twenty years ago, Jack Chandler walked this same wharf in Peyton Place, stood outside this same tavern. In those days, he came here for a very special purpose, to meet Leslie Harrington in the rear room to talk business, a peculiar kind of business. Recently, Jack Chandler revisited the tavern, but the owner, the lady in charge, Ada Jacks, gave him a cold welcome. Today, he's decided to try again, for if he wishes to reclaim Rachel Wells, he must have a friend and an ally in Peyton Place. Since when does Harrington go for drinking on the job? Who said I wanted to drink? It's lunchtime, Ada, one hour. You didn't come in here just to chew the fat with me. I may have. But you didn't. You don't know. You're still a very handsome woman, Ada. Oh, come on, Jack. All right, I, I came in for a cup of coffee. Simple enough, one cup of java. I'm uh, watching my weight. <laughs> You want a cup of coffee? Go down at the end of the war. This is a bar. Yeah. It used to be cozy here when Andy Jacks ran the place. Free and easy, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Save it, will you? The point is, I don't want you hanging around here. You didn't talk like that when Eddie was around. Well, Eddie isn't around here anymore, and you're not going to be either. Do you get that? Hi. Well, that's right. How are you? Fine. Well, how come you're not at school? Oh, my lab class didn't until two. And your little daughter wanted me to ask you to come to dinner Friday. Well, that sounds very nice. And I can confirm a definite yes. The success of our marriage might depend on it. Hey, say, Ada, you've been holding out on me. I didn't know you had a married daughter. How do you do? My name's Chandler, Jack Chandler. Norman Harrington. Hey, you must be one of Les Harrington's boys. Yeah. What do you know? I just started work for him. Great. Nice man, your pa. Real gentleman. So, <laughs> you're married to hate his little girl. Yeah, how about that? Say, by some chance, you're not Rachel Wells' uncle, are you? Sure I am. You know Rachel? Yeah, I know her. Well, I'm glad to see you again, Ada. Maybe we can get together and talk again. Huh? Will you soon? So long. How do you know him? Oh, he used to come in here years ago. My husband picked him up somewhere. Well, why didn't you mention that to Rita and I when we found Rachel? Look, you know how Rachel feels about Chandler. That's why she ran away. Well, I was never very good at names, Norman. I just didn't make the connection, that's all. Besides, it was 20 years ago. I didn't even recognize him when he came in. Let's see. Eddie took off right after Rita was born, didn't he? That's right. Then. Chandler must have been hanging around this town for a long time before he married Rachel's aunt. Yeah. What does that prove? Nothing, I guess. It just shows that it's a small world. Look, Norman, Eddie was a crumb. He brought home all kinds of trash. When he left us, they stopped coming around here. That's why I don't like to talk to Rita about her father. Yeah, I know. Well, we'll see you Friday. Yeah. I'll be looking forward to it. Uh, do you want me to bring something? No. It's all on us. All the way. Well, got to get to class. Bye. Bye. No. Don't mention to Rita about Chandler and her father, OK? OK. I'll meet you in the same place, Rachel, okay? Hurry, I've got to talk to you. All right, bye-bye.
Hey. Warm this up. Please. Pardon me? Nothing. Hey. Listen to this. Old man Peyton once, quote, a driver. Mechanical experience required and good salary. You know, he doesn't have much of a choice. I'm about the only guy around here that can tear that foreign buggy down and put it back together again. Just another car. If you can take one apart, you can take them all apart. You ask that brother-in-law of yours before you talk big like that, Rita. You see, I taught Rodney enough to run that garage on his lonesome, but he couldn't take that car apart and put it back together again if his old man paid him a million dollars to do the job. If you're such a great mechanic, why don't you go to Boston where you can really make money? Because I like it here. I'll bet. You know, I think I'm going to like being old man paint chauffeur. Chauffeurs never get their fingernails dirty. They wear gloves. They stay away from grease. That's what all of you young chickies like. Guys that smell like bubble bath. Guys like Rodney that can't get greasy even if they try. Rod's a lot more than clean fingernails. <laughs> Listen to you. He is. How would you like it if I got myself a blonde wig? What more is he, Rita? Let go of me. Rodney is a gentleman. And uh, among other things, he doesn't start fights. I didn't start anything with that little punk husband of yours, Rita. I don't care what he told you, but I didn't. You tell Norman to stay away from me. Because if he don't, he's liable to get hurt, Rita. Oh, I think he can take care of himself. Uh, with the children his own size, yeah. Look, I'm going off work now. Would you please pay me? Sure, baby. It's only one dime. This one's for you. No, thanks. Sorry I'm late. It's OK. Excuse me. Hey. What's your name? Rachel? Oh. What's the matter? You sounded so upset on the phone. I have to talk to somebody. <laughs> somebody? You. I don't have anybody else I can talk to. That's better. I'm leaving. You're what? I'm leaving the Carson home. I... Why? Because I haven't told him everything I know about Allison. You haven't? No, I can't. And you want to tell me what it is you haven't told them? I can't keep it bottled up inside any longer, Rita. I don't think I want to hear it. Oh, please. Isn't there somebody else you can tell? There isn't anybody I can talk to. I don't... There's nobody I can trust. Well, what about Rodney? No. I didn't find that bracelet in the dirt in the road. I found it on the floor of Chandler's car. Is that all? Did you hear what I said? <laughs> yes. Well, he knows I found it there. He made me promise I wouldn't tell Dr. Rossi or Mr. Carson. He said he'd hurt somebody if I told. Oh, come on. He meant it. Oh, Rachel, he just meant to scare you. You don't know him, Rita. I do. Oh, I've seen people like him before. He's just bluffing. You're not even trying to understand. Hey, you're acting like you did when we first met you. I'm sorry I told you. OK, maybe I'm dumb. But I just don't see what's so earth-shaking about finding Allison's bracelet in a car. In Chandler's car. <laughs> OK. It's just that he's... No, and I know you don't like him very much. Listen to me, Rita. Since Mr. Carson's been asking me all these questions, I've been remembering a lot of things about him. And they're strange. Like what? He didn't have a suitcase or any belongings when he came to my aunt's farm. She just brought him home. My Aunt Lucy said one day she was going to Charleston to visit. She came back married. She's in her late 40s, older than Chandler. 
where she met him or how she met him, I don't know, except that she said she met him at a church social. But after he came to live with us, we never went to church or visiting. People would come over to the house, and he'd make us send them away. After a while, people didn't come anymore. And my Aunt Lucy always stood up to people. But not to Jack Chandler. Not ever. In all the ten years of their marriage. I wonder what he did. I wonder what he did to Allison. You look knocked out. Yes. You can make us both a drink, Stephen. <laughs> I've laughed so much my throat aches. You have a very amusing wife. Well, so you're not going to chop off my head? No, you've passed the test. <laughs> what test? Well, Mr. Payton said I had to entertain him all the way back from Boston, or he'd chop off my head. <laughs> Just like that Sultan did all his wives. <laughs> Until Scheherazade came along and charmed him. Thereby redeeming in his eyes all womankind. Well, I'm glad things worked out. I don't think I would have liked to have had a decapitated wife. Mm. Especially since I got another adorable fur hat today. Mm. You know, I thought you'd call. The roads are bad. I was a little worried. I'm sorry, Stephen, but when Mr. Payton finished his business, he wanted me to see the Boston house, and I'm afraid I just didn't. But actually, pay too my much fault, Stephen. I uh, in insisted upon inflicting the family portrait album on, on poor Betty. Well, thank you. Here's the safe returns. Yeah. Uh, Stephen, I ran into one of the governor's aides in Wainwright's office this morning. He joined us for lunch. He tells me the governor has his eye on John Fowler for a plum job at the Capitol. Oh, well, good for John. Yes, it's a definite leg up for him politically. Of course, that leaves the DA's office vacant. An interim appointment will have to be made. Well, that's usually the way it's done, all right. You're very well qualified for the job, Stephen. Very well qualified. I don't need to be reminded of my qualifications, Mr. Payton. And if you're thinking of pulling any strings to get me the appointment, thanks anyway. But you are interested in holding political office. You've said so often enough. On my own terms. But you're ready now. Why not let me be the judge of that? Stephen, Mr. Payton is only saying... I know what he's saying, Betty. It's another chapter in the game of Arabian Night you play. Only this time it's not Shahrazad, it's Aladdin's lamp. Uh, you rub it, make a wish, and it gives you anything you want. But most people don't remember that when the old magician asked for the lamp back, and Aladdin refused to fork it over, he got sealed up in a hole in the ground. <laughs> I think you're carrying the simile too far. Am I? It seems pretty accurate to me. At any rate, give it some thought, Stephen. Fowler will be leaving very shortly. Betty, shall we shout for dinner? 